guys, it's Wendy from Fingerstick's Gallery again today. So I'm going to do a very large black background um, floating cup. So a couple inspirations that I want to show you. One of them was, which I love this little guy so much still, it was my baby dragon pour. He turned out great. So, um, but he was on a very light cream, almost white background. Super cute, super pretty. Um, so I wanted to do that again, but my other inspiration came from this white flower on the back or the black background. So it looks really classy. I got a lot of very positive feedback on that one. Uh, maybe because it's a little bit different. But before we get started, I'll show you my last pour. This was the blue ring pour with uh, the satin enamel, which I didn't get a lot of clouding. I'm still working on how to get the ratios right. Um, but this was my last pour. It's not quite dry yet. It's really pretty. Turned out great. It just didn't have the look I was quite going for. All right. So we're going to do a six cup uh, floating cup pour. And this has nothing more than it's about 70% Floetrol, uh, maybe about 25% paint, and then maybe 5% um, water, give or take on the ratios a little bit. So um, some of them might have maybe 10% water, it just kind of depends, um, but it's mostly 70% Floetrol. And the colors the exact colors. I didn't mess with them at all. I thought they'd look good on the black background. Apple Barrel, Purple Pansy, Turquoise, Folk Art Metallic Pearl White, Folk Art Color Shift, Raspberry, Oops. and then the Folk Art Metallic Royal Gold. Um, I'm doing three metallics in this one today because I want it to give it a little more pop on the black background. Now, the black that I'm using is just the regular, simple Apple Barrel Black. I love how this dries. It dries true to black. It dries really, really dark. There doesn't look like there's any gray in it, so it dries, it dries well. And the reason why I'm using the, the quote, cheaper paints are because that's really all we have available near us. So we're going to pour in these little um, red Solo cups, the little tiny mini ones are from Hefty. Um, they are, oh, I don't know how, how many ounces they are. I don't have, it doesn't say on the bottom, but they're just these small little cups, probably maybe two ounce cups. Uh, they work great for the bigger canvases, but I'm not going to fill them up all the way. I was also going to use these little jelly jars, but I only have three of them and I wanted to do six. These guys, you can reuse them. They clean up really, really well. So we're only going to put just a little bit of paint in each one of these. So the I want maybe the white to come out last. So again, about 70% Floetrol, 5 to 10% water. It just kind of depends. And roughly, I'm going to say 20% paint. And again, these are only estimations. Hoping, um, I'm hoping to get that lacing effect on the outside like I got with my baby dragon. So here's the consistency. So it's a little thinner than what I would normally use. Makes a little bit of mound. I might thin them up. Well, I don't know. There's so much Floetrol in here. I don't think I'm going to thin them up. The Floetrol I love so much because it actually, it's, it's quite a bit thicker than some of the other mediums I was using, uh, but it's also thinner than some of it. Um, I've used several different types of pouring medium. The Floetrol really has been my best friend. Works out great. Uh, you can add a little water if you need to. Just make sure it's the latex-based Floetrol. Uh, and it's cheap. This, was, this wasn't even $14 for a gallon at Home Depot. So, all right. So... Now would be a great time to fast forward if you have that ability. Um, so I'm just going to add them. Um, hopefully you can see these along the edge here. But I'll, I'll do the first one. I'm only going to put just a little bit. Maybe a third of a teaspoon. Maybe a quarter of a teaspoon in each one of these cups. Because I really want uh, to have a lot of negative space. And if I can, um, I've got a, um, a bird seed bag underneath this to protect my work surface. And so um, it's a little bit lumpy. Now this is the raspberry color flash. It's so pretty. Uh, it has 
Oh, it looks, it, it's like a reddish raspberry color with like gold flake in it. It's really, really pretty. I just really pick colors that I thought would look really good on a black background. So again, this is another first for me. I have not done this technique on the black background before. So um, if you've seen my videos before, you guys know I love to try new things just to see how things are going to work out. Even if they don't work out great in the video, I still want to show you because I like to share. So I really hope this is going to work because the black background really does make quite a quite a good statement. All right. And then folks, always check your consistencies um, before you pour because these have been sitting probably for five or 10 minutes. So things can change a little bit. Uh, the one thing that's very, very, very important is just to make sure all the consistencies are the same. If you have one that's too thin, it might run and blend with the other colors. If you have one that's too thick, it might sink and might not show up as well. So, or it can overtake. It just, just depends. And I've said this before, paint really does have a mind of its own. You can plan on doing one thing and have it do a completely different thing than what you were expecting. So just because you're putting one color in the cup first doesn't always mean it's going to be the last one to come out. They're sneaky. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this very well. I don't want to tip it too awful much, but there's not a whole lot of paint in the cup. It's probably, let's see, if I can see here. Okay, it's probably only about this full. So there's really not a whole lot of paint in there. And that's what I want. I want it to be a negative space. And I don't yet know how I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna plunk them on there and see which way I wanna move them. Uh, I'm actually having a thought. I might just go straight down the center and then kind of go out towards the side. Because I do have six. So it'll be even on both sides. So, uh, so the black background, I just did this um, just a couple minutes before I started the video because I don't want the background to really dry. I don't even want it to start setting up yet because I want it to bleed around the edges, bleed around the outside like it's already doing. And then I added a little more water and a little bit of flow trawl to this um, to make it, um, it still makes a mound. So it's not watery, but it's a little bit thinner than everything else around it because... When I go to move these cups around, I really want there to be some extra paint to help it flow. And actually what I should have done, I should have made it a little bit closer to the cups just to help it come out just a little bit more. So now that I'm I'm gonna wait for these guys to settle a little bit. Um, there's no oil in any of these colors, so it's just Floetrol, a small amount of water and paint. That's all there is in these guys. Okay, so these guys are starting to come out a little bit. Now, if you want to do a, a really awesome uh, floating cup and you want to put it on your canvas and move the canvas around, you could poke a little tiny hole in the top of your cup, put a little tape over the top of it, and then when you're ready, Take the tape off and that's, it will release the suction and it'll allow you to move your canvas around and move those paint cups around a lot better. So that's kind of fun. I've done that a whole bunch of times and it's, um, it's more interactive if you like the more active paintings. So try to get the paint right up around those cups. All right, let's start with you. Ooh, that is pretty. Maybe I'll put them up there. If anything, this is going to make a real statement. Those colors are really pretty. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to let this sit a little bit. I am going to torch it. Now, for those of you beginners, and I love catering to beginners, folks. I absolutely love it because I had so much help uh, and some really good online mentors that helped kind of figure this stuff out at the beginning. Um, and then I kind of stopped getting mentored and I wanted to try all this cool stuff on my own. So um, I got the basics and I want to show you guys the basics and some cool techniques, but I really, really encourage you guys to try something different. Uh, you've heard me say this before, hopefully, that don't ever be afraid to be a beginner. And honestly, nothing's ever a failure. I mean, just because something doesn't turn out, like my cloud effects have not been turning out, um, they're beautiful paintings. So it's not a failure, just a really good learning experience. So I'll say this to you guys, if you don't know why, because um, I still get a ton of people asking why you torch. Um, if you want texture on your paintings um, and you have a ton of bubbles, when it dries, you'll have a bubbly texture over the surface. It'll be rough. It'll be bumpy. Uh, if you want a nice smooth surface that looks like glass and it's easy to finish, you need to pop those bubbles, um, especially if you have a lot of bubbles and you're might, you might just be using either Floetrol or a little glue um, or oil. It helps pop the bubbles and create those cool cells that people like if that's the look you're going for. So let him sit for just a second. This is fun. I'm going to show you really quick while he's sitting because I am going to move him around a little bit. So this is another one that I did, the same technique. Uh, it's just on a white background. Uh, it was four colors. It was uh, like a, a pink, a purple, and then a blue and a gold. And then on the almost white, it's a creamy background. So uh, just four colors on that, two colors each, the pink and the blue. Uh, that was really fun. It's kind of neat. It has a little lacing on the outside, a little bit of feathering. Um, on this side, it has some feathering. It has a cool technique. Um, I think maybe I blew it out a little bit on the edges. Um, he might be a previous video, so go back and see if you guys want to see that. So, okay. I almost don't want to move it. Uh, kind of like my baby dragon. He started to morph into what, honestly, I thought it looked like a little baby dragon. That's, hence the, the name. Okay. Might move him a little bit. Because there is a, a definite definition between the paint I just poured and the paint that's only been setting up, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes total. So I definitely want to get, I might blow them out a little bit. Him a little this way. The more paint you have on your surface too, as long as it's not just a huge amount of paint, helps your paint to move around a lot better. So you want to prep your canvas. You want to have it a little bit lubricated. You want it to be able to move around a little bit because I noticed right in here, there's not as much paint and it didn't want to move at all. So he was kind of stuck and got a little paint boogie right there in the middle. I think I got it. Okay. So it's kind of neat. I will bring you guys in for a, a close up, but it's kind of neat. Like right in through here, it's starting to kind of fan out a little bit. And the gold is actually like, I don't know if it's resisting the other colors, but there's like a gold sheen across the top. That's really pretty. And I kind of like it the way it is. Honestly, I don't think I want to move it anymore. Oh, but me, I always want to do something else to it. So I'm going to try. I'm going to use my turkey baster. I'm going to blow a little bit. Like over here is kind of cool, but it's very defined. So I'm going to blow a little bit. I'm going to blow him out a little bit too. Don't blow too hard. If you get up underneath the paint, you are going to spray paint everywhere. Trust me. I'm just helping the feather effect a little bit on the outside. Oh, 
but I'm still trying to keep everybody a little bit separate. Okay, I don't want to do too much. See, it's helping him move out a little bit, which is kind of pretty. Okay, yep, I am going to flip you. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. We um, we spent most of yesterday in Union Gap, Washington. We're up north. We're in Brewster, so we're in a very small little rural, oops, uh, rural area. And um, my husband and I went out and had a nice lunch and did some shopping because things were on sale and... It wasn't too astronomically hot, which was awesome. Just adding some paint around the outside. So this was a reused canvas. Um, I, I, the canvas that I had, it looked like there was oil on the canvas and it had puck marks like everywhere. I don't know what, what this canvas was. I've never used this type before. Um, and it, I just, I had to repaint over it because it was just terrible. So I used... Um, spray paint, a green paint and primer in one spray paint, because I didn't have black, just to prep the canvas again. And so I'm trying to cover up all the green on the outside. All right, who wants to go? Maybe him. Ooh, see, there was a ton of paint underneath that black right there. Sometimes the paint hides if you do this technique, but, hmm. He's like a strip right there, so I'm just trying to break him up a little bit. Okay, I'm about ready to say I'm going to leave it alone. I don't want to do too much. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave him. I'm going to babysit the edges, so hang on, folks. I'm going to bring you in for a close-up. So I know the lighting in here sucks. So for that, I'm sorry. Um, but it's, it's really pretty. So it's going to dry a lot darker. So don't ever be afraid to try these new techniques. There's a lot of negative space and this one is really bright and shiny. It's going to be super cheerful. So, um, Ooh, this area actually right in there is really cool. Also this area over here too, without the reflection. Um, so anyway, these are my colors again. Uh, they are not mixed at any, any rate. Um, oh, there's the white. So they're not mixed at all. They are the true colors I showed you at the beginning of the video. Please comment below folks. Love to hear from you. Um, if you want to see me do anything or any, uh, critiques or criticisms or anything, feel free. I'm not shy. My feelings don't get hurt. So if this is not stuff you want to see or see something different, please comment below. I uh, hope everybody has a fantastic week and uh, you will see me very soon. Goodbye now.